All over the world, just about every energy company is now under pressure over issues relating to global warming. And the fact is that oil companies have taken different stances at different times about the validity of the science, about the reality of the problem, about the potential contribution of humankind versus other sources of carbon dioxide accumulating and so on. But one thing is clear, the future is not about the science, actually, in terms of pressures on these companies. The future uh, is about emotion. And the reason is that it's going to take us another decade or two to be absolutely certain where global warming is going and the, uh, what the actual outcomes are going to be. If you look at the range of expectations, there's a lot of doubt still about the degree of global warming, about to, to what the, the size and the speed of melting of ice caps and so on and so forth. But emotion, that can change overnight and it already has. If you look at the number of speeches made by heads of state in the last two or three years about global warming, compared to the three or four or five or ten years before that, you can see a huge change. Why? Politicians are populists, they go with the flow, and they understand that people are concerned about what happens with energy companies and the environment. They're concerned about what happens with energy use and the environment. They're concerned about the future generations and what they will inherit. And that is an emotional angst. It's growing. We will see a, a, a tenfold or even a hundredfold increase in the emotional pressure on governments to take action on every aspect of global warming. It will affect the decisions that consumers take. It will affect the opinions they hold. It will affect the image of multinationals. And I'm not just talking about oil companies. I'm talking about banks. I'm talking about uh, shipping companies, I'm talking about airlines, I'm talking about every kind of company in the world will be called on to justify its carbon footprint, to consider how it can reduce the amount of carbon that it uses around its own activities, whether it's uh, the number of, of uh, trips made by executives to conferences on the one hand, whether it's the amount of energy used to heat its own buildings on the other, and so on. So watch this space. We are going to see a monumental shift and this is going to drive some of what I've called the 40 trillion dollar carbon boom, which will be the amount of money that businesses will spend seeking to respond to this challenge as a result of pressures around the world. And many of the things that, uh, that uh, this money will be spent on will in fact produce savings for the future.